management of placenta previa okay the management of placenta previa depends on five things the amount of bleeding is it a huge bleeding or minor bleeding the frequency of a bleeding persistence or just for one time bleeding for example the gestational age is the baby term or preterm or post term for example <laughs> this, this will not happen for example okay fetal and maternal condition is fetal distressed are the mother choked and so on the grade of placenta previa all these things uh, is an important factors in the treatment or in management of placenta previa let's start now with the management of placenta if we have no or minor bleeding, then we will treat conservatively. Bed rest, no sexual intercourse or PV exam. Okay, bed rest, no sexual intercourse or PV exam. And when the fetus reach the term, then, then we look at the grade of the placenta previa. If it is a grade one and you know grade one is within five centimeters of the cervix but does not reach the cervix we can try a grade one and anterior placenta brevia we can try vaginal delivery okay and otherwise uh, otherwise the, we will do cesarean section okay and that's all when we reach there in the no or minor bleeding cases okay after bed resting for the uh, period between the bleeding or the uh, discovery of the placenta brevia and tear. If we have more persistence bleeding, uh, more persistence bleeding or more bleeding, okay, more in amount or and more in frequency, okay, bleeding, then first of all we have to stabilize the patient. We have called it how to stabilize the patient, just as we said in uh, a proper placenta, call for help. Uh, apply to uh, IV ports or large IV ports, cannulas, okay, uh, or catheters, uh, give IV fluid, a blood transfusion, CBC, PT, PTT should be done, uh, cross match, for this catheter and NTD and etc. Okay, so we have to resuscitate the patient to stabilize the patient first for because it's a case of a, it's a case of a bleeding. Okay. After that, after stabilizing the patient, we will move to emergency cesarean section. Okay, and uh, this is the case in the cases of persistence or very severe bleeding. But if the patient is stable, we can wait to 36 weeks, and we uh, we have to give steroids and anti D. Uh, here we should give anti D also. Okay, uh, I've mentioned that. Okay, we. To have to give steroids for lung maturity and anti D and anti D for uh, an O negative uh, mom, of course. Okay, now this is the treatment of the uh, it depends on the amount of bleeding, frequency, and we see uh, or we saw how uh, does the amount of bleeding or the frequency affects the treatment. Okay, minor bleeding or more bleeding or frequent or not frequent. And we also saw how the gestational age affects the treatment. Is it is it term or no? Okay, and how the fetal and maternal conditions affect the treatment. How and how the grade affects the treatment. If it is grade one or and until we can try vaginal. If it is more grades, then we have to move to CS. Now let's talk about the complications of uh, placenta previa. We have a very important complication which is a placenta previa accreta or placenta previa increta and pericreta what is placenta previa accreta it is actually a superficial attachment of placenta to uterine myometrium this is the u uterine we have here endometrium then myometrium okay and so on and we have uh, the serosa as the final layer okay if the placenta villi adheres the myometrium deeply or superficially sorry superficially then we have what we call a placenta accreta and it constitute about 80 percent 
of all cases of adherent placenta okay if the these villi uh, invades the myometrium and reach this serosa without invading it then we have a case of increta increta okay in increta it invades the myometrium and it constitutes about 15 percent 15 percent of all cases of adherent placenta i'm sorry adherent placenta and if we have a case of invading the even the serosa okay the lie invades even the serosa of the uterus and may reach the bladder or the rectum and cause hematuria or rectal bleeding then we have a case of pericreta okay so pericreta is the rarest it is about five percent okay it's the most dangerous because it invades the serosa in any creta it just invades the myometrium a creta is superficial invading of the myometrium okay so this is the cases of placenta adherent and it occurs especially after uh, a CS uh, a cesarean section uh, or any uterine surgery okay so these are the cases how to diagnose them by Doppler ultrasound Doppler ultrasound to see the blood supply uh, is it invade the layers of the or are the vessels invade the layers of the uterus and MRI also is to diagnose these cases how to treat actually in most of cases uh, we move to what we call perinatal hysterectomy perinatal hysterectomy we have to remove the uterus uh, within the cesarean section with the cesarean section if the case is more minor okay minor cases of accreta with no uh, not all the placenta uh, anchor or adhere to the layers of the uh, uterus then sometimes we can just repair the uterus without total hysterectomy okay but in most of cases we do what we call perinatal hysterectomy as treatment of uh, placenta previa accreta inacreta and pericreta okay this is all about placenta previa in the next video uh, inshallah i'm going to talk about Vaza Previa. Thank you for uh, th thank you for watching, and sorry for any mistakes. See you in the next video.